you see? You see how my skin has, has felt these last two years? I'm not complaining, I'm just saying, this is, this is what skin looks like. <sighs> oh my goodness, this is like the fourth time I'm trying to film this and I'm just fingers crossed that the footage turns out fine, the audio is fine, because I don't think I can try and film this again. But anyway, this video is gonna be part of my series where I reacquaint myself with my makeup because honestly, I haven't touched a large proportion of my makeup for the last two years because of the pandemic. I will admit my love of makeup has sort of been redirected into fashion and I do love makeup. I think that makeup can just really transform a look and I will always enjoy that expression of you know being able to do a glam look or whatever but it's just you guys can tell that um, my preferences for makeup has changed I do wear makeup pretty much every day still but in a different way for example I don't really do foundation because I'm wearing a mask every day I only put concealer on so I just don't get a lot of use out of my makeup someone actually asked me I think in the comments if my skin has actually improved since the pandemic and I would say not really <laughs> because I think that with the, a mask on it just kind of I think it did clog my skin up a little look it's not as dry in that sense because I think all the moisture is retained under that mask but my skin has definitely like it's felt these two years and I see like fine lines I never had which is fine you know it's part of the aging process and aging is a privilege I'm just trying to embrace what I have and just enjoy makeup and yeah enjoy my collection so in this series, I wanted to discuss foundations and I wanted to swatch all of them on my face because a lot of them I haven't worn in the last two years. I just, I just don't remember what a lot of these were like to wear. So I thought I would swatch them all, see if they still work for me, see if I still like them and discuss if I could still see them working in my life in some way, shape or form. I don't know if you guys are in that same boat where you haven't worn foundation in a long time. I think if I was working from home like I am today actually, I probably would wear more foundation. Let's have a look, let's have a play. 14 foundations here. Let's start with the Fenty Beauty one. This is a foundation I know I like. It's one that if I'm wearing foundation, it's the one I'm wearing. So that's that one. Good shade match on me. Like the texture, it's lightweight. We've got the Luminous Silk foundation from Giorgio Armani. And this is a foundation that I have used up in the past and I do use in my kit. It's just got a beautiful finish and it photographs really well. So this is that. I'm not sure actually if this is my shade, six. One of the newer ones is this Shiseido one. It's a Cinco Skin Self-Refreshing Foundation. Wow, what a name. I'm in the shade 160, or am I? I think this is actually too light for me. Someone recommended this, and I don't remember who. And wow, I don't think it's gonna work. We have this Cover Effects Custom Cover Drops. This is pretty much a mixing medium. It's pretty much pure pigment. Oh, that's very light as well. It's gonna make me look really ghostly. We have the NARS Sheer Glow in the shade Punjab. This is the foundation that I wore on my wedding day. It photographs really well, looks really nice on the skin. The annoying thing about this, as you might know if you've used it before, is it doesn't come with a pump. You have to buy the pump separately. And I think this is still a good match for me. I have the Anastasia Beverly Hills foundation. This one leaked all over my bag. I mean, I probably wouldn't travel with this knowing that it's prone to leak, but this is the shade. 240N and it looks actually really orange. Oh, that looks so orange. We have the Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Foundation. This foundation is the foundation that stays with me here. It is an expensive foundation. I think it's about $120. So, you know, if you're someone that goes through foundation really quickly, this is this might be a bit cost prohibitive. So we've got two face and body foundations from MAC. One is in the shade C2, and then this is sort of like, a, I believe it's like a limited edition shade in Light Pearl. This is, even from the bottle, you can tell this is gonna be too dark for me. I obviously tried to pan it at some point and obviously failed, but look, I've used up a large majority of it. I feel like I've only got maybe this much left. You do need to give them a bit of a shake before you use them, and they're very watery. This is C2. This shade I actually used recently without realizing it was too dark for me and I sheared it out and it sort of did look okay in the end. This is not my shade, light pearl. Okay, we have the Charlotte Tilbury 
Airbrush Flawless Foundation. This one is a very thick, moussey like foundation. You can sort of see that it grips. Overall, I do like Charlotte Tilbury Makeup, but I'm not sure about this foundation. It's been a long time since I used it, and I recall it being very, very heavy. The Dose of Colors one, which is one that I used the other day before I realized my microphone was off. This one surprised me because Dose of Colors is a indie brand that makes really pigmented shadows. So I thought this was gonna be a really full on foundation, but I like the texture. The shade match is quite good and the finish is nice as well. It's a natural matte finish, which I think looks quite nice on the skin. The price point is fantastic. I believe it's on sale when I looked on the website and there's a huge shade range, which I love. We've got a Kosas one, which is the tinted face oil. And this one is one that I bought when I bought a whole bunch of Kosas makeup to try. And for the most part, I do like Kosas. Like I think that they make really great products. I like their cream cheek product. I like their 10 second liquid eyeshadow, although they have reformulated. And then this one I recall just not liking. The texture, it's so oily and I just feel like it doesn't sit well and it doesn't last well on the skin. This is the most wet one that I have and it looks like this. Do people need this in the, in the market? I don't know. If you like this and use it, please let me know and let me know how you use it. And let me know like, what's your skin type? Like, who is this product made for? People with really super dry skin that don't wear very much makeup, maybe. And then last two are two drugstore foundations. These are the only drugstore foundations I use because I do just gravitate towards the more higher end makeup in general. This is the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Glow in 203. I heard a lot of good things about it. I don't think I've ever used this. So this is that one. So the texture is sort of similar to the, the Fenty one where it's got that kind of light, lightweight, slippy feel. So lastly, we've got the infallible total cover. And just looking at the shade on the tube, this looks, doesn't look quite right in terms of undertone. This is the shade, it's a very moussey texture. So there's all the foundations on my face, just to see what they look like. A huge <laughs> shade variation. I'm gonna wipe them all off my face and we're gonna do one foundation, one foundation, and see how I feel about them. So just to keep things interesting for myself, I'm gonna try out foundations that I'm not as familiar with first. So I'm gonna start with the Shiseido Synchro Skin Self Refreshing Foundation. I hate this name. <laughs> it's a tongue twister, too many S's. And by the way, it came cracked and, and in, in not so great condition when I ordered it from Mecca. So I don't know, this packaging feels really cheap and not the biggest fan. It looks really, really um, light. Now I'm gonna do, use a brush for everything because I think that's that's my preferred method of application. So just, first of all, try it out with a brush. It's very light and it has a matte finish. It's not my preference when it comes to foundation because it's, um, yeah, I like a little bit more luminosity. But yeah, this is, I would say, a bit too light for me. So what I'll do is I'm going to mix these two foundations together and see how they go. That's a bit better. I can't see a lot of my freckles anymore. At least for my collection, this is considered <laughs> quite full coverage foundation. I think mixed in with the MAC and Body foundation, the shade match is a lot better than if I was to wear it by itself. Out of curiosity, I'm just gonna try it on its own on this side of the face. Let's just see see what that looks like on its own without any assistance. This looks better. This is... <laughs> I look kind of crazy right now. If I look at my neck, it's too light compared to this one, which is much better. It looks quite heavy on my skin. I don't particularly like this finish. It picks up kind of a lot of texture on my skin, which my skin does have texture, skin does have texture, but I feel like some foundations just kind of blur it out a little bit more and make it look a little bit more flattering. I think that it just picks up on every little lump and bump and pore and hair. Not the hugest fan of it on its own, but with mixed in with something else, I mean, that side looks a lot better. You know, because that MAC face and body does have a little bit of luminosity to it. It adds a little bit of moisture and just kind of diffuses it a little bit. I think that it looks really heavy. So it's just off the bat, not a huge fan of this foundation on its own. The texture of it and the heaviness of it is just something that I don't look for 
in a foundation these days. I want everything that's opposite to this. By the way, I'm using this Ella foundation brush. It's a fantastic foundation brush. I've got several of these because I really love face brush like this for foundation. And that's my preference when it comes to putting on foundation. Maybe if you use a sponge, the texture of this might come out a little bit better, but like I'm showing you how I would use it. I'm not gonna go out of my way to change up my technique to make a foundation work. Okay, so let's move on to another foundation. I'm very curious to try the Anastasia Beverly Hills one. Yeah, again, it's a foundation that I haven't really used very much. Again, the shade looked way too orange. Yeah, the shade match isn't fantastic. That's half my face with the Anastasia Beverly Hills one. The finish, I will say, I do prefer over the Shiseido one. I think that it's, it's definitely not as matte. I remember when it came out, Everyone was bagging them out for this very basic packaging that just says foundation. And yeah, I would agree the packaging is just not very attractive to look at. I should have a look at what the actual brand says about this foundation and see whether or not I agree. So this foundation is considered a medium coverage. I would agree with that. Liquid foundation in a luminous finish. It does have a bit of luminosity to it. I can see my cheek oils coming through and I'm not wearing any highlighter or anything like that. Compared to the Shiseido one, I definitely think that this one looks a lot more blurring. But it's the shade match that's not... You know, it's very orange and this is supposed to be neutral. So let's see how I can make this work. I might mix it in with the Face and Body C2 and see if that works a little bit better. So let's see how that goes. Okay, I think that has helped a little bit. I mean, it doesn't look so bad on camera, but in person when I'm looking at myself in the mirror, it looks really orange. This one has toned it down a little with the Face and Body. But yeah, that's the foundation. What do I think about it? I don't hate it. I think it does look quite nice if I was to get the actual shade match. At this point in my life, it's not the kind of foundation that I would gravitate towards. These days, I'm just more of a light to medium coverage foundation type of person because it looks really flat when it's medium to high coverage. I feel like you need to add so much other layers, like you need to add blush back in and you need to add you know, bronzer in and you need to maybe get the freckle pen out and just add something to the skin to make it look more skin-like. And I think with light to medium, it just means that I might not have to layer as many <laughs> layers of makeup on my face because I'm trying to bring that skin-like finish back to my face, if that makes sense. But everyone has their preference. And I think, you know, for filming, this is quite a nice foundation. I think on camera, it looks fantastic. Two down and uh, 12 more to go. <laughs> In that same vein, foundations that I haven't really worn, Let's do the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Foundation. Is it gonna make me look flawless? What does this foundation promise me? Okay, let's see. So this is a full coverage, matte finish, 24 hour moisture. Pretty big shade range as well, and it has like skincare ingredients, which I like that about Charlotte Tilbury's makeup products. So it is a setting foundation and it dries down and oxidizes while it sets. So that's probably why I was worried about it when it said that it was when it looked lighter on my skin. So it will oxidize. So hopefully this will oxidize to a shade that actually matches my skin. This is a foundation that a lot of people were talking about when it came out two years ago, over two years ago. See, like just looking at that, that's really light. But yeah, actually, now that I've kind of buffed it in, it doesn't look too bad, but yeah, it does look like it's on the lighter side of a foundation that I would use. You know what, the more I look at it, the more I'm like, you know what, this is actually not a bad shade match. It is quite full coverage. It is hiding a lot of the freckles and pigmentation spots. It's hiding some of the redness around my nose and it does look very matte. It does still feel kind of tacky. I feel like I would still need to powder this down, which would make this even more matte. I don't know, like when did I discover this? Maybe in the last two years, I've discovered that I don't really like matte foundations. Although it is a matte foundation, I will have to say it does look quite nice on the skin. It doesn't highlight every single texture on my skin. I feel like it does look, it still looks quite smooth on the skin. I don't think any of the other foundations I have are considered full coverage foundations. It's probably good to have one in your arsenal for events where you're out for a long time and don't necessarily want to be touching up all the time. Hopefully, I feel like this would probably stick to my skin. 
okay, I've surprised myself. I wasn't expecting to like this foundation, but I think this is a nice full coverage foundation that doesn't look super heavy on the skin. Let me try it out with a bit more of a luminizing base. I've got a tiny little bit of the skin perfector, shimmering skin perfector from Becca. So I'm gonna try and use that up. I feel like this foundation, I would like a little bit more luminosity. And a little really goes a long way. I don't feel like you need a lot of product to actually make this work. Yeah, just with a little bit of skin perfector, that already looks a lot more like a foundation that I would like. That's what that foundation looks like. I am pleasantly surprised. I think that's why it is good to actually use the makeup because you forget. You forget about all these gems that you have in your collection. Even though I don't wear foundation, every now and again I see a foundation that has just come out, like that Charlotte Tilbury, the new one, that looks beautiful. And we're like, ooh, should I go buy that? And then you're like, well, I have 14 foundations in my collection. What I'm gonna do is actually as I'm using this and then putting this away, I'm actually gonna put all my like medium to full coverage foundations all together. Uh, so I know in future, if I'm looking for that kind of finish, I'm gonna go for this bag. This is the beautiful Lisa Eldridge Limited Edition bag, by the way. Absolutely gorgeous. Are we sick of the full coverage foundations yet? Because my skin needs a break. So I'm going to go ahead and try the Kosas Tinted Face Oil, which sounds the absolute opposite of the ones I've just tried. I haven't got high hopes for this one, just based off what I remember of it. It is extremely liquidy. So, fingers it is, it feels exactly like a face oil, which I guess is the point of this product. Like it's not pretending like it's not a face oil. And then I might just smooth it out with my brush. Feels very greasy on the skin. I don't love that about this, just has that oily feeling, which I don't love. This is what it looks like. If I did not add any powder to this, this is just not going to sit well on my skin. I feel like you would definitely have to powder it. So I'm gonna powder one side of my face to show you how that's gonna look. So let's do that. That's half my face powdered, and that feels like more like a foundation, less like a face oil. Without powder, with powder. Still don't love it. For my life as it is now, it's not a very practical foundation. It's just gonna slip and slide. I can't imagine where I'll be wearing this foundation, you know? Maybe a mixing medium or something that, yeah, I would use in conjunction with a lot of powder. Let's try these drugstore foundations because I don't think I've ever used them. Maybe once. This is the Infallible Pro Glow. I've heard many an influencer rave about this foundation. Looks like a good shade match. And it hasn't covered up everything. I still feel like I have a bit of redness peeking through. But yeah, I would say that this does have sort of that natural, slightly luminous finish. It does have a light kind of slippy feel. I think for a drugstore foundation, this is really nice. Can't remember what these cost, but they're probably around 10 to $15. It does also have a slight bit of SPF in it, 15. So I, I mean, I always put, you know, sunscreen under my makeup because SPF 15 is not gonna cut it. So that is what that looks like on that side. And I'm going to do the infallible total cover on the other side. And this one is totally different in the texture. It says high coverage, matte finish, and it feels very moussey. You know, it's very thick. This color is, it's a bit, I think it's a bit pink actually. And I would agree that this one does look a lot more matte than the other one. So this is those two foundations next to each other. Pro Glow on this side. Total Infallible on this side. So hopefully you can see the two next to each other. Of the two, I definitely prefer the Infallible Pro Go over the Total Cover. I think that this one has a nicer finish. This one is a little bit matte. The color's not quite right for me. I think for drugstore foundations, they're actually pretty nice. Drugstore has definitely improved so much since I started wearing makeup. It's a nice option if you don't want to spend a lot of money on makeup. Next up, I thought we'd do the MAC Face and Body Foundations, and these are 
two of them in different shades, different finishes. This one has no sparkle whatsoever. This one does. And I'm going to show you what they look like side by side. This is a really great foundation for people that want something super light coverage, but will slightly even out the skin tone. If you've got freckles and you want them to still show, this is a really nice foundation. And generally speaking, you know, this one is also one that you can just apply with fingers, which is really nice. As you see, it's very super light coverage. And because of that, if you don't get the shade matched exactly perfect, you can still kind of make it work. It's like um, one of those like no makeup makeup foundations. So this was sort of formulated for makeup artists to use on photo shoots because it doesn't have any sort of, you know, glitter particle, you know, shimmer particles in there, um, SPF or anything like that. Just a nice wash of color. And once it does sit down, it's pretty transfer proof as well. As you can see, it's not matte, it's not luminous, it's quite a skin like finish i would say it just looks like skin really and then this is light pearl so this one is actually too dark for me so i'm just going to put a little bit on the other day when i wore it i sheared it down quite a lot and just sort of added powder and you know it's really quite <laughs> a um looks like i've got some sort of tan had a bit of sun as you can sort of see this one is slightly too dark for me but like i said because it's so sheer i can sort of make it work it's just about kind of like adding lots of powder and adding some concealer to like lighten up some of the areas and it's workable but obviously not my perfect shade match so it kind of looks like i've had a little bit of a tan but um just on my face those are those two on my face, and I do love the MAC Face and Body Foundation. I haven't worn them in a long time, but I do think that, again, it's nice for when you want something very, very natural and almost imperceptible. They still work really well, and I do like them still. So they definitely have a place in my collection. Okay, so we're moving on to some more familiar territory foundations that I remember liking. So I'm going to wear the NARS Sheer Glow Foundation as well as the Giorgio Armani Foundation, which both of which I have not worn for a very long time. So let's get them on my face. It's a pain in the ass to apply because no pump. I would literally rather pay a little bit more for them to include a pump because who wants to be pouring foundation out of the bottle like that? Here is the NARS Foundation. First off, this foundation is a pretty good shade match on me. Maybe slightly too warm, but I think I can get away with it. it it has quite a natural finish on the skin. It very much looks like skin, but it has more of a more full coverage than your face and body. This is one of those foundations that I would gravitate towards for an event or something that I know that I need my skin to look good and to last a long time. I think it's a really great, reliable foundation that photographs really well. So it's one that I would gravitate towards for that. But how I would use it now, I probably would add in on top of this or mixed in with a luminizer, something that will give it a bit more glow because that is sort of what I like more nowadays. That's actually what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna build this up and add some of the Auric highlighter. This is the Glow Lost in Selenite. And I love how that looks actually. So let me just zoom you in. Let's move on to the other foundation that I really like, which is the Luminous Silk one in the shade 6. This might um, actually be a little bit of an olive undertone to it, which I think I grabbed the wrong one. I don't think this is actually my shade, but we're going to just... Yeah, that's an olive tone. But I'll just show you what that looks like. It's a very pretty foundation. I feel like this foundation has a very flattering effect where the skin looks very smooth and evened out. It doesn't make your skin look like it's a lot of texture or anything like that. Whereas like the Shiseido one, I feel like you could see every little little bump in there. And it is, I would say, on the more medium, buildable kind of coverage side. This is not my right shade. I think I'm a shade one or one shade lighter. So this is described as a silky, lightweight, fluid foundation for seamless application, natural looking, glowing skin, oil-free, fluid, microfill technology, which helps sculpt and brighten the skin, improving texture and blurring imperfections. This formula is infused with glycerin to provide all day hydration and it's medium coverage. I will say because of the price point, I am very scant with it. I believe it's like 130 
dollars for a bottle i think this is my most expensive foundation but i know it's a good reliable foundation and i like it just checking myself out in the mirror and yes these are the foundations that i would wear if i was going for a photo shoot or something i knew i had to look good now why i say these foundations are good for photography or film is because these foundations don't contain any of that light reflective particle. They don't have any SPF in there. So if there's flash photography, there's no flashback where you have that sort of white cast. So I really like them for that. Okay, we've got four more foundations to go. Let's use the Dose of Colors one, which has a natural matte finish. I used it the other day and I do enjoy it. Let's also do the cover effects one, which is too light. Let's see how we can make that one work. I'm going to do the Dose of Colors one first. You know, I feel like Dose of Colors really surprises me sometimes because a lot of their products that I've used from Dose of Colors, I've really enjoyed. I feel like this is a pretty good everyday foundation. If I was not wearing a mask and wanted some decent coverage, you know, you can sort of tell that it is still foundation but it's not overly heavy on the skin the skin has still a nice natural finish where it doesn't look too matte not too luminous of course if you like something more matte or something more luminous you can buff those up with products on top or underneath or mixed in together so we're gonna do the cover effects custom cover drops this is n20 on the other side if you just look at that stopper it's so gloopy like it's very thick and extremely pigmented because it is like pure pigment basically so um this is what that looks like on the skin and as you can see it is way too light for me so this is one that you would actually mix in with something slightly darker to make it work so let's mix that in with the face and body hopefully that will diffuse it as well because i think that was just too much so still slightly too light. The idea behind the custom cover drops is that you really just need a little bit to add to your whatever other product you have just to get that shade match perfect for your skin. I would have to add bronzer and contour and blush and all that just to mask that this one is slightly too light for me. You know, maybe I would mix this in with the Rouge Bunny Rouge bronzer, which I have used up before and this is my second tube. And you know, just adding that to deepen up just to trick people that this foundation works this is actually my shade you know so you know you'd probably have to deepen it up with something like this to make that work let's do the close-up so you can see so i think that's obviously with some product that would work a lot better i think looking at the viewfinder i prefer this side over this side thoughts my skin is very happy to report we have only two more foundations left. And these are pretty much my trusty go-to foundations. I'm ending this off on a good note because I already know I like these foundations. So let's start off with the Fenty Beauty one and you can sort of see I really have very little left in this tube. I like it because it's a nice lightweight, not heavy foundation, light to medium coverage. And like the other foundations, method of preference on how to put them is either fingers or with a brush. Now this does have a slight smell to it. So if you don't like foundations with strong fragrance, you might not like this foundation because I would say pretty much all the Fenty products I have tried have pretty strong fragrance in them, except for like the highlighter and you know powder products, but their lip gloss has a strong scent. It's not, it doesn't offend me though. I don't mind it. Again, it's what I would wear just, you know, out and about. It's just an easy, breezy one to wear. I do like it. Would I repurchase it? Probably not because I've got too many foundations clearly. So but what does it say about it? Okay. So this foundation, okay. It's as full coverage. I feel like it's on the light side. So maybe it's buildable, but I only ever put one layer on. It is an instantly smooth, pore diffuse, shine free finish. I would say it's on the natural side with a bit of luminosity. This works pretty well on my dry skin. If you're on the very dry side, like very dry, you've got flaky patches. This is not gonna work. I feel like it does emphasize, doesn't layer well over, you know, very, very dry skin. You know, I have noticed when I've used this, when my skin has been very dry, it doesn't quite work. Then we have the Pat McGrath Labs Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Foundation. This foundation is really nice. It's a really nice everyday foundation as well. And this is the foundation I keep here when I'm filming down here. 
It's a nice color match and it looks good on the skin. It's not too heavy as well. So I feel like it gives a nice finish to it. And I mean, there's very few Pat McGrath products that I don't actually like. She's got a really solid makeup range. Although I haven't bought a lot of her makeup recently because I've just got too much makeup and not enough time to use it all. So this is what that foundation looks like on. Similar to the Fenty Beauty one, it's got a natural finish. I would say this one has more luminosity to it. It looks like my skin looks quite hydrated because this foundation does have that already luminosity and glow to it that I wouldn't necessarily need to go over top with more highlighter. What does it say about this foundation? It's a silky, luxurious, weightless foundation infused with lush Vita Serum Complex. It's nourishing, it's got hyaluronic acid, 12 hours sheer second skin tint. Uh, it's a satin finish. It's got 36 shades. And how much is this? 110. So it's a pricey foundation, but I think it's a really nice, beautiful foundation. Really lovely finish. I know it's gonna look good, so I've kept it down here. Again, I think these are really great everyday foundations. My preference is I do like those kind of sheerer, or at least buildable foundations. Those are all 14 foundations on my skin. I'm really glad I don't have more foundations than that because that is a lot of foundation. Like, I'm ready to take off all the makeup off my skin. But yeah, I'm excited to wear a full face of makeup again. I can't wait for those days where I. I get to bring these foundations out and wear them again. It was really interesting to see and try on all these foundations again, because like I said, because I haven't worn the majority of these for the last two years, I don't remember on whether or not I actually liked them. And I would have to say most of them worked out pretty well. There were a few that I was like, mm, I'm not sure about you. I would definitely have to find ways to make you work, like the Shiseido one, but then there were ones that I was pleasantly surprised about, the Joseph Collins one, the Charlotte Tilbury one that makes me excited again to wear foundation. So let me know your thoughts. Like, do you guys still wear foundation or do you like me have that collection of foundation that has been for the majority of the time sitting untouched and unused? I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.